Welcome to the Nerdstalker Tech Week podcast. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerdstalker here with my cohort, who is right there. Social Greg, a.k.a. Greg Glory, or Greg Glory, a.k.a. Social Greg, however you want to look at it. But uh, it's it's episode 25, my ah, friend. Yes. <laughs> so what did we got first there, my friend? Let me let me uh, get the iPad 3 review going here because I know that that broke late last week. And um, I, I saw the humble uh, blo- blo- bloating that you were saying. <laughs> or hum- oh, humble bragging. me? Bloating? <laughs> yeah. Humble brag? <laughs> this little thing? Yeah. Oh, my there God. it is, yes. So was, yeah, yeah as you can see, everyone, uh, this is the i this is the iPad three in this box is anyways that I've been playing with. I actually bought it for my mom is is the guinea pig actually who who is long overdue for a, a new computer with her old nineteen eighty four Dell or whatever that she never uses that's gathering dust. Um, so yeah, I've uh, got bro- got this broke that sucker around, and uh, you know what was really interesting about this thing was that it came uh, pretty much fully charged. You know, it was like. At eighty four percent, I was playing with, and uh, and uh, nice. you, immediately the, the the thing that that grabs you, obviously, like everyone saying, is the display. The display is pretty insane. The I, I couldn't is see it? any pixels yeah. at whatsoever. Uh, it's it's night and day compared to the other iPad. Nice. Uh, I have the iPad one. Nice. Uh, it's noticeably faster, responsive. Uh, I was doing a lot of like Google Maps painting and other type of like uh, CPU intensive to wow. RAM intensive kind of stuff. Um, Okay, and it was is much faster. the uh, The camera on, on it was super fast, uh, faster than my Android, uh, pathetically enough. And um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, I didn't in- install any of the any of the apps really, uh, any, anything in particular except Flipboard really to play with, just to 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 see how oh, yeah, how, sure. how nice the pictures display and stuff. And and th- the first thing you notice is that a lot of these websites that are using low res images, you better like start using some high res images because you really Really notice the the quality um, of of everything mm. on, on websites and stuff yeah, like that immediately. And if you if you kind of half assed you know your pictures and, and, and yeah. so to speak, uh, yeah. uh, you're gonna notice it on this thing uh, for sure. Um, so I bought mine at, at a Best Buy of all places on the day of the morning. And, oh um, yeah, sure. And you know, and there was no line, so it was just pretty much you go in. And well, there was a very small queue inside the store itself, uh, and you they they kind of gave you a, a ticket kind of thing. I, there was about ten people in line. I saw Loic, uh, the CEO of Seismic, there, of, and uh, he was you buying, serious? he was buying a few of them. Yeah, yeah, he had some some French guys buy. It. He gave them their his credit card, and you know, and they went and bought them for him or whatever. But uh, yeah, that was which, which was funny. <laughs> nice. But uh, yeah, yeah, it seemed to go fast. The, you know, the the thing about Best Buy buying it there, the experience they do really hard upsell. Uh, they're really trying to push their warranty sort of thing, so it's not a pleasant experience. Like yeah. I, the Apple Store, obviously, I would recommend going to the Apple right. Store. Um, and also, the salesman also said the weird thing. I kept saying no, no, because I'm used to this routine because I bought a high def TV from there, and I know that that they try to scare you. And they and they use the same thing too. They at the very end of the whole thing where I'm saying no, 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 I don't want, I don't want, I don't want my warranty, I don't want a credit card that you guys have or anything like that. He's like, well, I've heard bad things about the battery, so mm, you know, if you ever need to come back in 30 days, and they do that kind of scare tactic too. So ignore it people it's my recommendation but you know i'm just some guy um go to the go to the apple store and buy it but if you're having a hard time finding one which i'm hearing is not an issue actually right now uh mm. then then uh then go to the apple store and and do that uh yeah. personally you know yeah. after after playing with it um yeah. if if uh you know if you've got an ipad 2 and uh you don't want to uh do what i'm about to talk about here with amazon um I I really don't recommend uh, moving up yet unless you're really like a designer or really intent on on the picture quality, you know, and you need a faster uh, type right. of type of system. I, I say I would personally wait for a serious iOS rev. Um, after seeing, mm. I went to another uh, function, JavaScript function, where a Windows 8 evangelist was there uh, displaying Windows 8 on the tablet, and um, it was it was really compelling. Actually, it was it was quite nice to see all these different sort of um, tile tile type of uh, modular type of uh, experience and stuff, which was quite mm. nice. Uh, I would really like to see iOS rev up um, seriously, and. Um, but anyways, another option that I'm about to talk about here is uh, what Am- Amazon is doing now is that oh, they're offering, yeah. you know, if you do have an iPad too, I would seriously consider uh, trading it in, essentially. What they're doing is they're accepting these whole things. So uh, this was, I believe this was from Gigom or somewhere. It said, as of uh, last yeah, Saturday morning, move. if you've got a well-cared-for iPad 2, 
Nextworth, which and you want to talk about a few of these sites here, is going to give you 241 bucks for it. Uh, Buyback Mac is offering 224 bucks. eBay Instant Sale will net you 200 bucks, and Gazelle, the most popular of the buyback sites, will only give you 185 bucks. Uh, sure, if you're hurting for cash to subsidize your early adopter lifestyle, 200 dollars is nothing to scoff at. Uh, but if I were you, I'd skip all this and go to Amazon. Uh, so as of right now, it's trading, and this is as of last Saturday, I should say, it's trading for. Uh, they're giving you two 288 dollars uh, for 16. Nice. Gigabyte Wi Fi iPad 2 that has normal wear and up to $320 for one in like new condition. Indeed, Amazon's wow. trade in uh, trade in's lowest offer for an uh, iPad 2 is $236, so that's pretty much on even with everyone else. Considering that Apple mm. is selling the new iPad 2s for $399, how can Apple afford to how can Amazon afford to shell out uh, up to $320 for your old one? Uh, so that's one wow. catch to Amazon's trade-in program, is and, and it's brilliant. There's one catch here, is while other sites will give you cash for your old goods, Amazon will only give you store credit. Uh, of course. So, of so, course. Come so on. that is it. Brilliant. So thus, the extra money you get from Amazon compared to other trade-in services isn't a total loss uh, for, for Amazon. All that cash will be plowed back into Amazon's own sys- uh, business. Depending on what you buy with your newfound wealth, the company may be making a nice little profit on the deal. So uh, a Effectively here, they're taking a cut, you know, because uh, on the sale. So if you sell the item, you get an X amount of money back, right? And Amazon's going to take a cut. Whoever the transactional system, I I think, too, is taking a little bit of a cut. Right. Uh, But they they make a little bit of money. And if you don't, if you don't spend your store credit, which millions and millions of people don't, you know, they just sort of give up like gift cards, right? That people don't ever use uh, the the store wins, you know, because they just sold you nothing. Wow. And and they give you cash. Um, and you pay them for that. Uh, and if you and Amazon has something else also called Amazon Prime, right? Which is an annual subscription, mm. which they make a lot of money on. So if you use that money to, you know, hmm, I think I'm going to sign up for Prime and, and start using this free money that I got from my iPad yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to buy right. other stuff, then then they also win. So it's like this trifecta of great for them. So I don't know. It was a it was a you know interesting sort of tie in story to the the new iPad. I love yes, this sir. story. This is a really important one here because um, <clears throat> I'm a posterous user. So Twitter, they made a big uh, acquisition here, huh? Oh, yeah. Or uh, an so, acquisition. Uh, well, an acquisition. Um, uh, got this uh, tweet from uh, all Twitter, um, Shay Bennett, uh, this last week. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, tw- Twitter announced that the blogging platform Posterous has been acquired, and um, its engineers, product managers, and staff members will soon be joining Twitter um, team so they can make Twitter even better, they say. Mm. So, uh, it, you know, it's really much to be a talent acquisition, they said, because, yeah. you know, existing Posterous bloggers should be kind of serious about moving the content to another platform they they, they were saying in the article um right. and you know forbes also kind of you know they gave kind of a history which was kind of neat you know poster was launched about what mid 2008 and, and i think its best feature would really it would set it apart from its uh, competitors at the time was you know getting email to post into your blog right right yeah and that, I thought that that would definitely, you know, they were making, I think behind posters, they're always making blogging easier, right? Yeah. I think that's some of the features that I saw, right? Yeah. Some of the things that just allow you to quickly post something without any, you know, hoopla. And now Twitter's bought it. So I think, you know, you know, hmm. Adolfo, you're a posters user. Yeah. Are you going to be making any arrangements over to Tumblr or? WordPress or yeah, WordPress? Uh, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, the preschool my daughter goes to right now, I have them all set up on Posturus, and it's as you mentioned, it's super easy because they were probably one of the innovators to to do this whole updating by email thing and not even have to right. interface with a cell phone or website or or any right. any app I should say or anything like that. So um, uh, it's a it's a big deal. I have explored um, exporting now or t- looking at Tumblr. The thing is, Tumblr has a much more limited um, band uh, amount of stuff that they'll host themselves, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and then once they charge you, Posturus was doing this all for free, obviously, too. Another thing, too, is uh, what Tumblr doesn't support is the uploading of uh, documents or PDFs or PowerPoints or any type of asset like yeah, that. Yeah, div- I'm a Tumblr user, Which, so yeah, with, I, yeah I know Yeah, so you see, that that's a well. huge deal because for schools, you know, they obviously, they, they use a lot of Word documents and things like that. And what was an awesome feature of Posturus is that you could attach this Word document or, or PDF to 
an email and send it to your to your blog if, if, to become a blog post. And what it did is it automatically integrated with Scribd. I don't know if you're familiar with Scribd.com. What they oh, do yeah, yeah. is they convert right, right. your Word document on the fly into this like sort of flash presentation thing, which was really cool. You know, the sort of nice. Uh, actually, they're using nice. HTML5 now too and stuff. Um, so it was quite nice. So yeah, I haven't found uh, an adequate replacement yet, you know, uh, for that. So I, I'm a little worried, but um, Tumblr is looking like the front runner right now, possibly besides some sort of like, um, yeah. you know, homegrown type thing. But uh, yeah, you're right. It looks like a, a more of a talent grab than anything else. It, it seems it sounds like they're going to pretty much snuff out the whole system. I like your next one, my friend. Uh, Google acquires mission startup that accomplished totally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thanks. Uh, you've know, been buzzing all over the internet for a while now. But uh, Mission Local, uh, yeah. Rigoberto Hernandez uh, says, yeah. Yeah, from uh, from all things D, he quotes also um, Google t uh, at that point confirmed the news uh, that they bought. You know, they bought uh, Kevin Rose and then some of the team of his mobile app incubator Milk will be joining uh, Google, is what is what they say. Uh, those joining the company are Rose, noted designer Dan Daniel Burka, Biz Dev guy Chris Hutchins, and designer Joshua Lane. Uh, they'd reported yesterday uh, that each of the employees will be receiving on the order of a million to two million dollars each and uh investors will what? be getting their money um or maybe it's a collective they haven't said each actually so who knows it could be a million oh, or two okay. million spread hey what's a million two million between a few friends buddy chris o'brien of the mercury news thinks the google acquisition of the startup that quote accomplished nothing uh sends him a, <laughs> the wrong message to silicon valley so bankroll a couple of talented techies who are unemployed shop them to big players like facebook google yahoo make a quick buck for doing pretty close to nothing seems like uh the kind of small thinking that shouldn't be rewarded or encouraged um wow you know this is interesting i think you know personally this might be i don't know uh kevin rose is a great marketer <clears throat> you know dig did quite yes. well dig nation the show did quite yes. well uh he's a he's a sort of a celebrity uh, of sorts in in yeah. the tech world uh he speaks and stuff like that so uh, maybe he could be some sort of a google evangelist and that kind of worth uh Personally, I think they really picked this thing up for the noted designer, designer Daniel Burka, who's known for a lot of his yeah. uh, app work. And uh, I think Google, Google could use the design help, um, obviously, sure. wherever they can get sure. it. Um, was it uh, worth <laughs> a, you know the $20 million or whatever they paid for the entire thing? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, but you know, they, this uh, gentleman does have a, po a, a point in that milk, um, the startup that, that yes. Kevin and these people had started. Uh, they released an app called Oink that uh, failed, and then that was pretty much it. I know their plan was to create more apps and iterate and and do right. this lean startup kind of thing. Like, let's see what sticks, and then kill it. Sticks, kill it. Sticks, kill yeah. it. So, yeah. No, I mean, a lot of people are doing that model, right? Um, I, I, I'm pro I, our company was promoting um, a couple – of those type of people who like almost churn one almost one app every two weeks or something like that. It was crazy. Wow. And, 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 you know, I, you know, you're just trying to find out something that will just hit, hit something. And then, you know, if you do, I guess, you know, if you do it enough, you're going to do the Monte Carlo method. You're going to eventually get something. So, hit something. Uh, so, Hey man, speaking of yeah. throwing something against the wall and seeing what sticks, what's the story about <laughs> Yahoo suing uh, Facebook? Oh, you know, I usually don't like some of this stuff, but I, I thought this was noteworthy because some of the some of the people like NPR were actually talking about this more on a um, a, a much bigger scale. But you know, uh, it was announced this week uh, via Bloomberg that uh, Yahoo has accused Facebook and federal court um, of infringing patents related to internet advertising and information sharing. I I guess they invented social networking. <laughs> So lawyers for Yahoo in a complaint filed today in uh, federal court in San Jose uh, seek a court order yeah. barring Facebook from infringing on 10 patents and awarding it triple damages. Um, you know, the patent uh, co cover website functions uh, that include advertising, mm -hmm. privacy, protection, messaging, <laughs> according to the complaint. Wow. Um, 
you know, and, and Yahoo is said in February, I, I, which I, I didn't really realize that something went out on the wire on this one, but they had to license its technology and noted that other web companies had licensed its intellectual property. So Yikes. they just told Yikes. Facebook to get on the train, buddy. You know, according to eMarketer, right, Yahoo lost its number one spot in U.S. display advertising, right? Yeah. Uh, which includes like video and, and other marketing stuff. Um, wow. You know, I... I I don't like this type of stuff because, you, you know, Yahoo's just trying to, you know, get whatever they can get at this right. point, you know. NPR, uh, Jacob Goldstein, I'll put this on the backstories, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mentioned really one more serious issue with, with pat the patent system, you know. Mm -hmm. In a poll they had last year, I think they did an article on software engineers, and they said, you know, many patents are so broad, the engineers say, that everyone's guilty of infringement, <laughs> you know. Developers, I know right? Leo Laporte was talking um, last weekend too about how uh, he'd mentioned that uh, one of the gentlemen who developed upcoming uh, upcoming dot org was part mm. of uh, one of the startups that was acquired by Yahoo and uh, and that uh, obviously they they took part of his patents um, also as part of the acquisition and this is just one sure. little startup among many that they acquired at the time and they promised they said that they would never use them in an offensive matter uh, manner and that was like part of the the arrangement or whatever and uh right. now, and they would only use them in a defensive way right or whatever and uh now you're seeing exactly you know the, the opposite they are using they're weaponizing right the uh the patents that they have and i think we're starting to see this over and over and this is this is a company obviously it's uber desperate you know you talked about their search engine really their search engine is microsoft search engine now right it's bing that's that's powering <laughs> yahoo at this point exactly. so they really have exactly. nothing and then there's word today that they're now they're getting rid of uh uh, if not going to fire, they they fired their New York research lab and and tons of researchers. Um, and we're talking when you're talking about researchers, you're talking about top tier uh, engineers, you know, and stuff like that. And right. and Facebook's right. there with, with open arms, waiting to hire these guys. Um, please come, you know, please come. Uh, I know companies here in the Valley too are giving deals um, for these Yahoo uh, engineers to leave and and go to them also. And uh, you know, people keep wondering what Yahoo still has talent. Yeah, they have an incredible amount of talent. I mean, check out YUI yeah, absolutely. and the Yahoo absolutely. developer YDN Yahoo Developers Network. Those guys, Douglas Crawford, and and I can go on and on. These these guys are, are right. geniuses. They're really they're really super talented and they're super critical for the web. And it's it's terrible what's what's mm. happening to them and what what Yahoo is doing here. With these patents too. Um, let's go to another story you had there. Um, uh, Google Plus. Uh, the problem isn't design; it's a lack of demand, which I thought was a good article. I read I read that uh, mm -hmm. after you tweeted that out the other day. So yeah, yeah. I've been uh, talking about this more that. and more. Yeah, thanks to GigaOM and, and Matt Ingraham, the the uh, the reporter there for bringing this thing. Yeah, while Google continues to maintain that its Google Plus social network is doing just fine, thank you very much, with a user base of about 100 million, according to the web giant, skepticism about the actual popularity of the service remains high. New York Times writer Nick Bilton argues that in recent posts that the problem with Google Plus is poor design, which I don't think is the case, since new social networks like Path and Instagram have managed to gain a substantial audience. Uh, as others have pointed out, however, those networks are more, uh, much more specific than Google Plus wants to be. Right. Uh, Google's right. vision is of a Facebook-style network that encompasses hundreds and millions of millions of people in a broad range of activities. Uh, the problem is that no one seems to want that except Google. Um, a recent Wall Street Journal story on Google Plus painted a picture of a service that is a virtual ghost town, is, was the quote, a network where uh, users spent an average of just three minutes uh, a month, according to stats from a uh, web measurement firm Comscore. <clears throat> In other words, a blink of an eye compared to the six or seven hours that typical Facebook's users spend on the yeah. site. Uh, yeah, I so Vic Dutra said that according to the company's internal measurements, more than 50 million people use the network daily, which sounds pretty impressive until you notice that its numbers represent people who have used Google Plus enhanced products. Um, that means anyone. <laughs> that means anyone who's logged into YouTube or Google Plus or Picasa or done any number of other things that are tied to Google Plus. Said, uh, <laughs> so said Gundotra. Uh, so in other words, uh, Google oh, sees its gosh. network as a social layer. So this is an interesting point. That is that they're seeing their network okay. as a social layer on top of uh, that's integrated into all of the other services. I, I love this summary from a Googler, a uh, former Googler. He said a argued Googler. in a recent Fuller. post, uh, blog post about his departure from the company. The single biggest problem with Google Plus is that no one needs it except Google. 
one of the things that you always hear out there um, in the social world, the social graph, um, and all of the social worlds of social graphs, is, is that the the the, the we, and we talked about this I think a couple podcasts ago about the 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 vertical silo nature of each kind of um, app that you're you're going to right, mm -hmm. and, and you know they're kind of softly integrated, but they're not really integrated. So you can make the argument that Google's really trying to integrate, even though, of course, it's going to have to you know, do its Google products. I yeah. mean, come on, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, yeah. But, but, but I hear that complaint from a lot of people that a lot of products aren't integrated as, as they should, and, and Google has the power to do that, I yeah. think. That's, that, that's the one point. Now, yeah. whether they do it well or not, that's, yeah. that's debatable. That's but... thing, right. <laughs> right. Is it a Facebook but, killer? But, no, I don't think so. Absolutely not. Yeah, no. not, not as a destination. No. Mm -mm. No. No. No, I, I agree. And, and, and if you think about it, right, Google is, is, is polar opposite from Facebook. Facebook has to do acquisitions to add some of this functionality that Google Plus already has, yes. right? So so yeah. it, it's interesting how both of them are now converging, right, yeah. or, or from a different direction, right? So, exactly. Exactly. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right, man. Yeah, speed round cool. time. All right. Oh my God! Speed round. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah let's, let's get put the seatbelt on. Let's do man. this. So Greg, all right, kick it off, it. man. Yes. All right. Well, this was via PSFK, the ideas and inspiration site that I uh, look at regularly and daily. Uh, airline passengers given iPads to stream in-flight entertainment. I thought this was so cool because I, I thought I thought of, I've been a traveler to Japan on a monthly basis for a few years for working for a company, and you know the technology has gotten great you know it's it's great but what they did is uh the Australian uh Australian airline not Austrian air Australian airline Qantas uh was the world's first to trial the use of Apple iPads as an in-flight entertainment unit. I mean, this is great. Uh, uh, passengers who boarded uh, the Boeing 767-300 uh, during February were surprised to find a tablet device in replacement of the usually fixed screen in the back of the seats. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. You know those fixed screens yeah, we suck. all look at, right? <laughs> Yeah. They suck. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, so a, a special uh, streaming app was loaded into the iPads, and it can be accessed via the uh, aircraft's wireless connection. Wow. So it was really cool. Passengers needed to enter their seat number first before being able to select and stream movies, music, and entertainment. I, wow. I, Wait till they get the sense, iPad 3. Right? <laughs> it's going to look so sweet. Yeah. So let's cool. move on to the next one. All right, man. Uh, so uh, this one's wow. a New York Times, There's man. There's a tear coming. So after 244 years, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica stops the presses. Uh, they're done. So that's pretty much what they say. Oh my god! How's gosh. that for speed round? No just kidding. Done. Um, yeah, yeah. So as a sign of times, they're just they're throwing their hands up and they're admitting, you know, hey, we're you know, we can't do it anymore. We're not making money and we're getting killed by Wikipedia and uh, you know Google and yeah. and, and online uh, type of other solutions. So uh, uh, this is a huge transition. You know, I grew up wow. uh, with encyclopedias sad. in in my library. Me a too. few in my home. We couldn't really Me afford too. to have a full set, but um, they You're were right. beautiful when I would see them. And oh man, did I did I use them for reports and stuff all the time? So uh, oh, yeah. it's really weird for us. It's bizarre to think that there are kids being born right now who have never seen an Encyclopedia Britannica. But uh, uh, that's the reality <laughs> now. So. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, Siri, Siri reported struggles in its Japanese debut. So, as you know, with the launch of the iPad, the new OS version um, had a new series up, Siri update that brought support for Japanese language. Well, right. you know, the Japanese users for their iPhones were really excited about that, right? Yeah. But it turns out, mm -hmm. um, uh, reported by entirely Uber Gizmo, mm -hmm. uh, it it looks like the basic commands, you know, basic talk wasn't a problem, but when it comes to a little bit more advanced and complex commands, that's sure. where Siri falter. Yeah. And so they, um, the, it, on the link, you'll see a video side by side against NTT Docomo's own voice rec mm. system, which is really nice. Wow. And so I, I think, you know, what it is is just that there's still some more development. Everyone yeah. knows there's some more in the voice rec technologies. Well, I even think, Siri admits yeah. that it's still in beta. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I or think Apple that you know, beta. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think it isn't false advertising, which a lot of people end up you know oh, yeah. claiming for you know if, you know, and luckily they have the beta yeah. uh, name after it to try to make sure that they're protected. But I've, I've tried you know, countless of these of... these voice 
things and none of them work. I mean, even on Android, I mean, they all suck. By the time I get so frustrated, like halfway that I just go back to the keyboard. And I'm like, this is taking too long for this thing. So Microsoft announces no new Xbox hardware Ooh. this year. So it's short and sweet. The hottest selling gaming console ah. out there right now. So sorry, Xbox users, you are stuck with it for another year. Um, so we hear uh, is what <laughs> is what we're hearing here. Supposedly the rumor is the next one is like you know way better, much faster, whatever. So but at this point it's vapor vapor hardware. So all right, man. No oh, tip time. Oh, tip time, God. Greg. Tip time. Tip time. Tip time. Okay, I'll lead it off. Uh, Hey, this was a great one I saw this week. Uh, transfer files inside Facebook yeah. thanks to Pipe. So they're, they're releasing that, I, I think, this week, actually, if it hasn't been released already. But it's, you know, right, you could transfer files right now through uh, message attachments, right? And, and not hmm. too many people actually realize that, no, actually. Not. But not not in big slabs of data, right? Hmm. So, you know, you know, Pipe uh, came up with a really clever wrangling on some Adobe technology let users... Uh, uh, of the social network kind of send each other files of up to one gigabyte in size, cool. uh, which is uh, using big. not much more than a dr drag and drop, dude. Wow. So um, hats off to the pipe guys. Yeah, you know, totally. they, go. they made they made Facebook a um, kind of a useful thing for uh, communicating, which kind of like now, you know, with Skype. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting. Okay, cool. what do you have? I got a, for all you uh, sort of display designers or UI, UX, web developers, or anyone else that wants to see what your website looks like on different devices, uh, check out mm. responsive.is. So that's the word responsive and dot is. <laughs> and go to that URL. And what, and what it does, it allows yeah. you to put the URL it of is. your website into a field. And then you just hit enter and you select the device that you would want it, how you would want it to display. So like a, they oh, let you nice. allow a desktop, so tablet, nice. uh, vertical landscape or, or, you know, horizontal landscape of a cell phone. And uh, just by a click of each of these, it'll display your website, you know, uh, in each one. And it's very interesting. I've tried on a few different ones, and I've seen some websites yeah. that I need to tweak immediately to uh, get it to look uh, yeah. much better. And uh, anyways, it's super handy, super quick, responsive dot is. Check it out, people. Oh, that is that is cool. That is cool, especially for developers and yeah. designers. Wow. That's, so, Greg, that's events, tip, what's man. coming up, man? Yes. Hey, we got SF New Tech coming up March 21st. It's called the Spring Fling, and it's also the anniversary show. Sixth anniversary. And, uh, yeah, sixth anniversary. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll be streaming it live, but and I think we have some uh, cool startups for that. And uh, you catch it on www.sfnewtech.com. If you want to buy tickets, uh, go, it'll go to the Eventbrite page, and you just click, and uh, you can go, and you'll see uh, Adolfo and I as – uh, media attendance there so um awesome and then i have coming up um uh for b tracks uh march 27th uh, business, business dojo, dojo. Uh, global <laughs> global bridge hr <laughs> and uh b tracks brings a japanese event to citizen space uh the owner of yoshi's uh nightclub yoshi right. akiba will be speaking uh which will be cool uh, cool. and and she'll talk about you know her uh, startup of the Oakland um, venue as well as you know uh, expanding to San Francisco eventually. Very it cool. took a number of years before they went to San Francisco, and so that will be good. And uh, we'll uh, end another one on on the one that we're actually uh, putting our uh, our work into, right? That's right. So May tenth, Taste on of Petro. You guys check it out at tasteofpetro.com. This is a benefit for uh, Daniel Webster Elementary, which is a public school which needs a lot of help here. Uh, they're putting on this really nice high end type of uh, food and wine type of event, an auction type of scenario thing. And, uh, you know, tickets are on sale, so go check it out now at tasteofbetrayal.com. Uh, it's going to be great. If you want to contact us, you could contact us uh, through Twitter, uh, actually, with the, using the hashtag NRDSTK. And uh, we'll use it, use it if you tweet that out to us uh, for our podcast or consider using it. Or you can catch all of our podcasts, obviously, on, on nursart.com. We just released uh, a, a few this week. We had an interview also. Yeah. So, But how, how do they find us on iTunes? Uh, yeah, yeah, so please go to iTunes, and then you could do a search for uh, Nerd Stalker, you know, Nerd and, the, and Stalker. And uh, you can si subscribe to our audio podcast and our video podcast. And please give us a rating. Sure. Five stars is, would be wonderful. And because uh, that helps us with that, with that, uh, you know, that ranking there. And you can also catch us up on, uh, find us on YouTube. Uh, use the word Nerd Stalker TV, all one word, and you will find us there as well. So, Greg, cool. uh, how do cool. we get a hold of you? Well, you can reach me on Twitter at Social Greg, or you can reach me on email uh, at uh, actually Social Greg at NerdStalker.com, um, right. which. Uh, 
the boss gave me finally got gave you. me a new email. Finally got it. We spent the money. <laughs> <laughs> Give Greg email. <laughs> it's an expensive technology. But anyway, Greg. that's right. And how do they reach you, my friend? You can find me at Twitter at NerdStalker is the handle, and uh, Adolfo at NerdStalker would be uh, the email address. So please give me a uh, email. Yes. So thanks oh, for watching, cool. everyone. Right, Check it out again. Yep. All right, Greg. All right. Be careful out there. Take it easy.